It's so good to be back in the house of the Lord again. Amen. 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 And it's good to be. I mean, last week I, I came and I recorded the sermon. There was no one here. And I was talking to my dad. I said, Yeah, I went to the church and recorded the sermon because we didn't know how the weather was going to be. And I got to watch out. There's a, something in here makes it click. I'll go this way. And, and I told him, I said, I hope it's not a sign of things to come. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're all here this morning. It showed me it was not a sign of things to come. Amen. 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 However, we still have room for any of you out there that are looking for a home church. We've got plenty of space. If you want to socially distance, I can, I can see about six rows right now that I can stick you in the middle of the third row. We're going to be nearly within 18 to 12 feet of you. But anyway, so the idea. It's, just, it's good to see you all here this morning. Those of you that are online, we're going to continue our journey through Psalm 23. And we're going to look at Psalm 23, verse 4, and I have some other psalms that we'll share as well. As we continue our journey through the Shepherd Psalm, Psalm 23, 4 reads like this. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no, fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. Father, I ask your blessing upon this word. Anoint it for this hour for your people. Let it go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. amen. Last week, as we looked at how the Good Shepherd puts his name on the line for our righteousness, I noticed that David kind of builds on that in this week's passage. As David notes, it is the shepherd who leads us. It is the path of righteousness on which we are called to follow. And it is the shepherd alone who is able to carry us through. We saw that in that little section of twenty second half of verse, 20, or verse 3 last week. And now as we move forward in the psalm, I notice that David's thoughts, his points are not lost on him. That he continues to build on these. I believe he's building on these in this next verse. In his understanding of what that means. When he said there in verse 3, this, that second part, he said... Um, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. And he begins with that. He leads me. And in the very next verse, he says, for even though I walk. And as I thought about that, the path of righteousness should not be interpreted as a path of ease and relaxation. I think I have that up there as a, a, a note. Because uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. Because if there's a tendency sometimes uh, as believers to think that once we accept Jesus Christ as Savior, everything's roses. Right? I was going to say hunky-dory, but I didn't know if that was necessarily something some people understand. So we'll go with roses. Scratch the hunky-dory. Everything is roses. Everything is perfect. And it seems to me like when Paul, Jesus, Paul, we'll get to David eventually, when David makes this statement about the path of righteousness, I'm walking that path of righteousness. Everything's going to be perfect. And then he goes on and says, but wait, the path of righteousness. And some would disagree with me on this. And that's fine, you can. But I just see as he connects this, the path of righteousness leads through a dark valley. I don't think there's a disconnection here. It shouldn't be interpreted as a path of ease and a path of relaxation. Rather, the path of righteousness is a journey through what David refers to or calls the valley of the shadow of death, or as the, the Bible knowledge commentary calls it, a valley of deep darkness. Now, I don't want us to sound like, or make this sound like, wow, the Christian life is just awful, and it's like, woe is me, and everything's bad, and I'm going through this dark valley, and I'm going to spend the rest of my life in there. That's not it at all. Let's be honest. Life is not easy. Life has its ups. And it has its downs. Mm -hmm. It has its good days. And it has its bad days. It has its pre-COVID. And it has its COVID. And one of these days, it'll have a post-COVID. Right? We can only hope. Right? And, and then what will happen after that? Something else will probably come along and we'll be dealing with whatever that is. That's just the way it is. We have the good and the bad. This is part of what it means to be living in a fallen world. Everything is not perfect. 
And so we're going to find that there are these moments in our life when we walk through these valleys of deep darkness. The upside is we don't walk alone. As I said last week, Jesus puts this on him. It's for his name's sake that the psalmist says we are led and we walk. And when we enter, when, we, when we're walking on that path of righteousness, when things are going well in our life, Jesus is there. Well, I want to tell you this morning, when you get into that deep, dark valley, he's still there. That doesn't change. He stays with us through thick and thin. So what does this mean, then, that Jesus walks with us in this dark valley? There are three points I want to look at. The first of these is quite simple. The shepherd walks with us. Like I just said, the shepherd walks with us. We do not walk alone, for he remains by our side. He remains with us. We, our journey, when you accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, you accepted a journey to which he will always be a part. He will always be with you. In the psalm, um, the... the um, Psalmist talks about a rod and a staff. The rod and the staff were tools the shepherd carried with him to protect the flock. So as the shepherd's going along, he's got this rod, he's got the staff, and I'll clarify those a little bit more in a minute here. But think about this for a moment. He has, got, he has these tools that he carries with him to protect the flock, which tells me that where the flock goes, so goes the shepherd. Do you, you see this? Why carry these things if he's not going to be in a position to use them? So as the flock journeys, so, so, do, so does the shepherd. And the, the nice part about this is, from this perspective, is as the, the shepherd goes, really, so goes the flock. They're going to follow him. He's going to lead them, as David said, in paths of righteousness not for our sake, in his name's sake. But the shepherd is a leader. He, he guides us through. So when you enter that dark valley, we're comforted in the fact that we don't enter it alone. But we don't know the path of the journey, but the shepherd does. He knows the path we need to take. They were, these, this, this rod and staff were, at times they were used interchangeably. I, I did some research on this this week, and it's really kind of interesting. Uh, when I, one of the dictionaries, when I typed in rod, one of the uh, theological dictionaries, it put rod and staff together and didn't get it. When I wrote the staff, it said, see rod. Okay, which I thought was interesting. Okay, let's keep it simple, cut it down, put it all on one page. Um, but the passage, uh, in our passage, these words are used differently. As a matter of fact, they're, they're different words. They're not the same word. While we might look at these things as being similar, it's, it's unique in the fact that the words that the psalmist Jesus, David Jesus here are not the same. And so we have to look at them individually. Because each serves a different purpose. You see, the shepherd is with us offering guidance and protection. And that's what the rod and the staff do. They offer guidance and protection. So with this in mind, as we look forward and we look through this passage, what we see here is that the shepherd has to lead if he's going to guide. Imagine for a minute a flock of 100 sheep. And the shepherd's standing in the back saying, okay, you guys up there, turn to the right, turn to the left, do this. No, it doesn't work. We, you know, we've gone on trips. We went uh, years ago. We had the opportunity to go to Israel. Um, as I always like to say, BC, which was before children. Uh, and, and we went there, and we had a nice time with our guide. It was, it was even a good night. We've been on other trips as well over the years. But imagine going to a place like Israel especially as a Christian, you want to see all the, the, the sites that relate to Jesus and the early church and the apostles and, and, and the life of Jesus and the, you know, the Via Dolorosa, uh, you know, the, the, the empty tomb, all these traditional sites and things. Now imagine for a moment, you get a guide and you hire this guide and you've got this group, well, we had quite a large group, maybe 30, 40 people because there were different churches all together. Then imagine him just kind of standing in the background shouting over your head, you know, 
Uh, the next thing you want to do is turn left. And as everybody walks past everything, he's in the back telling you what it is that you just missed. Kind of silly. So what does a guy do? A guy gets in the front, he stands here, and he hollers over everybody that's talking and taking pictures and doing all kinds of things. And he explains and describes and, and leads from point A to point B. Why? Because he's done it before. He knows the route. He knows what is of interest and what is not of interest. And that's what a guy does. And that's what the shepherd does. He knows when to find the green pastures, when to find the still waters. He knows at certain times of year you're not going to find certain things because it's going to be dry, so you've got to move somewhere else. He guides the sheep. And the good shepherd guides us. Well, we, when you and I think some people this morning, right now, you might even feel that you're in that dark place. You're in that dark valley. You're overwhelmed by whatever's going on in your life. Well, I want to tell you this morning, and I'll reaffirm this again later, you are not alone. Jesus isn't pushing you through. He's guiding you through. That's what he does. And he's not going empty-handed. Psalm 138, verse 7, puts it this way. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. Isn't that reassuring? Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You are with me. You are, you are there, guiding me, directing me, protecting me. And this is what the shepherd does. So when we say that the shepherd walks with us, he walks as our guide, our protector. And this leads us to the second point, and that is that the shepherd defends us. You see, we do not fear danger, for he protects us. And this is what David says, I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, but I don't fear anything, because you are my defender. You are there. You see, the shepherd's rod, and the Hebrew word here is um, sebet, was a short club-like stick most commonly used for defense. So that's why I said that the two words here, why they can be used interchangeably in English words, the rod, as we see it here, and there are other used, words used for rod, but in this instance, this time, David, a shepherd who understands what he's talking about here, says, I'm going to club the first thing that comes along and tries to take one of my sheep. He is a defender. The shepherd would use this rod to ward off predators. If, if the flock was in danger, it was the shepherd who put his life on the line for the flock, and he did not go empty-handed. In the same way, as we walk through these dark valleys, these dark places, as we find ourselves... Um, overwhelmed by what's going on, the one who walks with us, who guides us through, carries with him that rod of defense. He defends us. He stands in front of us, protecting us from whatever. I know sometimes we lose sight of this. We just don't, we don't see it. Maybe we don't understand it, or we're just so overwhelmed that we think we're totally alone in this. Yet Jesus is our defender. You see, the shepherd defends us in times of peril. When we, when we place our trust in him, when we totally count upon him to, to not just guide us, but to protect us, then we have truly connected and understand what it means to serve under the good shepherd, to let him be who he is. <coughs> now, understand here, as I would thought about this, you know, there, understand that God also gives us wisdom and grace. There's one thing to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that dark valley, and there's another thing to jump into it, in foolishness. Sometimes we put ourselves in situations and then we want to know why Jesus isn't there to get us out of it. And it's 
he's still there, but probably he's helping us to learn something because we have chosen to walk into a, on a path that was not of his choosing, but of God's. So we must be careful not to just jump into a path that's not a path of God's choosing, but our own. We weigh this out. We let the Holy Spirit guide us in the ways of the Lord and not become self-guided. Imagine for a moment, going back to this illustration again, if we decided to go on a trip and um, we, we hire, the group hires a tour guide and here's this tour guide and he's like got all this laid out and he wants to do, he, he's got everything done and they're very, very meticulous and they're very organized about what they do. You're gonna get as much in as you can possibly get in. I'm, I'll be honest with you, when they say don't miss the bus, don't miss the bus, okay? Now imagine all this time and effort and everything's planned out and you get over and you say, you know what, I think I'll take a self-guided tour. I've got this pamphlet and I know what I want to see. I'm going to see everything that you want to see, but I don't want to hear this guy. I want to do it myself. I want to take my time when I get to, you know, the, the empty tomb. I want to take my time when I get to the Golgotha or to the garden. And you take your time, and you get back in the room that night, and everybody's talking, the hotel that night, and everybody's talking about all the wonderful things they see. And you say, what did you see today? I saw the garden. Well, what about this and this? I didn't have time. Why? Well, you know, I, I was here, and I wanted to go to this, and it was on the other side of town, and I'm going to come here, and I wasn't organized. I just kind of made my own path. And in the process, I lost something. What you lost was your guy. We try to establish our own path in our life. We try to think, well, I know how to get from point A to point B. The only problem is to get from A to B. I go to E. It doesn't work alphabetically. The shepherd knows the path through the valley. He's traveled it before. And he will continue to travel that. He will continue to lead us through that path if we trust him. And we, if we place our trust on him. When the enemy seeks to do us harm, it is the rod of the good shepherd that protects us. When that time comes, and it, it, it's whether we're walking in as we're walking in obedience, and, but I also believe when we jump into it foolishly, he does not abandon us. Jesus uses the illustration in the New Testament about that one lost sheep that the shepherd will go and find. Now stop and think about that for a minute. The shepherd was lost for a while, or the sheep was lost for a while, but the shepherd went and found it. Even when we lose ourselves, he is there to find us and protect us. Let's just not put ourselves in that position a lot. I think that's important. Psalm 118, verse 6, puts it this way. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Who's on our side? The Lord. So what does that mean? I will not fear. Again, lack of fear is not a license for foolishness. Lack of fear is a confidence in Christ. And there's a difference. So we have this confidence that, that he will bring us through in times of peril. And and. Even though we're walking that path of righteousness, these times will come into our lives. We won't face them. But stand confident. We're not going to face them alone. Why? Because Jesus Christ has put his name on the line for us. And this brings us to the third point. The shepherd guides us. As we're walking this path, this path through the valley of the shadow of death, this dark valley, we stay on the path that the shepherd leads. We don't deviate left, right. We go forward. We follow. We walk in obedience. And he will guide us. And this guidance means that we do not lack comfort. The shepherd's staff, and the Hebrew word here is masana, uh, or masena, 
was a long stick that was often used for supporting the bearer. So while the club was used for defense, it was probably shorter. Uh, I just pictured a club maybe with a larger head on the end and a handle. The staff was something that the shepherd would use to guide, walk himself, keep himself upright when he was tired, okay? Supporting the bearer, but it was also used in relation to the Lord supplying one of his abundance. So we see this idea of the staff, okay? You've heard the term bread as the staff of life. So what does that mean? That means bread is our, our, our source of abundance from God. It's, 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 it's nutrition for us. Things like not, you know, good bread. But the idea of this abundance, it's this, this protection, club, abundance, support. The shepherd would use the staff to guide the sheep. He wouldn't club them. He would guide them and direct them, supporting them, showing them the way. There are times when we just need to lean on the shepherd's staff, and he's got it there for us to lean on. Or we can just lean right on him, directly. Isn't that wonderful? But because of his ability to do so, he can carry the weight of the world upon his shoulders because of his staff of comfort, because he guides us, he directs us. The shepherd directs us in times of fear and uncertainty, and we will have those moments but as our guide realizes when well, we're in that valley, he's right there with you. Follow his path. Follow his footsteps. Walk in his way. And we have to fear him. There's nothing for us to fear. Because he's with us. When trials and tribulations overwhelm us, it is the staff of the good shepherd that we can lean on for comfort and support. His staff, his comfort, his guidance. Psalm 27, verse 1 puts it this way The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? So, what is the Lord? He's his light, his salvation, his stronghold. He's everything. He guides us even through the darkest valleys, even through those most difficult times in our life. But you know, again, here, we must follow his path. He protects us from anything that lies ahead, and he guides us through the valley to the other side. Only Jesus Christ can do that. He is our good shepherd. He laid down his life so that we might live. But he lives today. So how do we follow this shepherd? How do we allow the shepherd to guide us? As I've been reading about things like allegory and stuff uh, lately about parables and how they allegorize them. I'm going to do a little allegorical interpretation here. The Holy Spirit is our rod and our staff. The Holy Spirit protects us if we allow ourselves to be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit and obedient to His guidance. But the, the Spirit will lead us. The Spirit becomes our staff. When you need something, when you feel lost, when you're struggling, lean on the Spirit of God. Pray in the Spirit of God. Seek the face of God in the Spirit that, that you will find the, the comfort and the guidance and the protection of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. One of the most difficult parts of living a Christian life is remembering that we do not travel this path alone. And there are some, uh, especially now, we're, we're coming up on two years. Next month will be two years of this whole pandemic. And I believe there are some right now uh, out there who, who really feel that they have been totally alone for the past two years. Maybe you may be back to work. You may be back to talking with friends and things like that, but something is missing. You miss that fellowship of the body of believers. You miss that time of praying with one another, lifting one another up. You spent two years separated from the body of Christ. 
And while you may have been separated from the body, don't interpret that or translate that into being separated from him. As you have walked this valley, he has been with you every step of the way. And he will continue to be. He will continue to protect. And he will continue to guide. He will continue to support. He will continue to be everything you need if you allow him to do so. But you have not been alone. Sometimes we feel that way. We feel alone. We feel separated. You miss that fellowship. The lack of fellowship has, has left you vulnerable. It's left you isolated. But you're not. Because while fellowship with the body of believers is wonderful, if it lacks fellowship with our Lord and Savior, something's missing. Know for certain that you are not alone. As you look forward to the day when you can gather together in fellowship with the body of believers, and like I said, we got room. So I'm sure many churches still do. As you look forward to that day when you can gather together, in the meantime, trust in the protection and guidance of the Holy Spirit to help you maintain your faith in Jesus Christ. Probably the most dangerous thing that can happen during a time like this, an extended period like this, is to begin to feel that God has abandoned you. David shows us he will not. As I said last week, why? Because it's his name on the line, not ours. And then what does he say? He says, even in the darkest valley, in your darkest time, even when you feel the most isolated or lost or alone, he is with you to protect you, to guide you. Let the Holy Spirit minister to your spirit. That's what Jesus Christ wants to do in your life. If you're not a believer, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, the shepherd is waiting. All you have to do is call upon his name. For those who do, will be saved. If you are a believer and you find yourself lost or vulnerable or hurting, he's there to bring comfort, to bring peace. If you find yourself being Bombarded from things from the outside, and you feel like you're lost in darkness, he's there to protect. He'll do it all if you'll trust him. Will you place his trust, your trust in him? Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2 puts it this way When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. That's our comfort. There's nothing that you will face that Jesus Christ will not be there with you. Just trust him. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to put your trust into the hands of the Good Shepherd? That's the call. That's what, we're, that's what God wants us to do. Today, this verse... Our emphasis, that's what it's all about. Let's pray. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, whether you feel like you're walking through a dark valley or not, He is there for you. And He wants nothing more than to be shepherd of your soul. And all you have to do is ask. Ask God to forgive you your sins. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. And he will forgive you. If you find yourself struggling in this dark, a dark valley, whether it's of your making or whether it's just the making of others around you, you are not alone. Even if you're not together with a body of believers this morning, or you're hearing this online and you're, you're at home and you're feeling lost or forsaken, Jesus Christ is with you. And he will continue to remain with you. Don't lose sight of that. Don't stray from the path. 
Father, as we close our time together today, I thank you for your servant, David, for these words of comfort that he has given us. And I pray in Jesus' name for those who uh, seek to accept Jesus Christ as Savior today. I pray your blessing upon them. Holy Spirit, speak to them. Draw them to Christ and let them accept Jesus as shepherd of their lives and their souls. And for those, Lord, who are struggling, maybe they're going through a dark path, a dark time. Maybe they, they find themselves, Lord, in need of something. Maybe they're overwhelmed by what's taken place over the past two years. And they're just beyond hope in their own minds. They can't see an end. Well, we can't see the end to the dark valley. But we can follow the one who knows the way. Be their guide, Lord. Direct them, protect them, comfort them. And each and every one of us, Father, we pray. And we thank you and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you all for being here this morning and for joining us online. As always, if you have an offering today, uh, there's a basket up here. You can drop that off up here. Also, you can give online through the church's website or um, um, through the Faith Life page. Uh, the videos, the, the sermons themselves, if you're not able to access them through the website, you can go to New Creation DV on YouTube, and you can still access them directly from there as well, or through the Facebook page. So God bless you, have a great week, and may the Lord